right, guys. So let's take the same old rhythm which we've been looking at for a while now. The uh, tum ta dum ta dum tum ta dum ta dum. Okay, and let's see where this can take us. Fine. So melodically, a great way to improvise a melody in the right hand with some plan in mind. Otherwise, we just say take a scale and just jam on it. That doesn't get you. too far because sometimes you won't know what to do so improvisation is also about getting a few basic ideas or a few basic concepts or a few basic patterns or shapes and then you assort them together in all sorts of ways uh, and then that creates improvised performance right so sometimes improvisation should not be just playing music freely you need some kind of job or some kind of restriction right to to give you that creativity so the two patterns which i'd like you to focus on in this chapter of our series would be sets of 3 and thirds so to build a third you need a scale so i i'm on e minor but as i mentioned earlier we could consider the hybrid minor which could either have a flat minor 7 or the major 7 so that creates harmonic that's the natural harmonic okay so you first figure out your thirds to get a third you skip one and play the next one so e third is g f sharp third is a g third is b Is third is C, B is third is either D or B to D sharp, and then C is third is E or D to F sharp or D sharp to F sharp, E G. That's the octave. So without me saying much, those are your thirds of the minor. so you're going to use that as a system so you bring in thirds over whenever you see two notes in your rhythm tang ta dang ta dum so maybe at the last two you could incorporate thirds tang ta da third mm ta na third so the first three could be maybe a set of three so how do you build sets of three is quite self explanatory your scale three sets another three da 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 g a b la da da Or da da di, or da da di, or da da da. Then da 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 di, da 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 di di di, da da na na na, da di di do 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 do. Da 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 di da 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 di 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 do do do. Da 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 di do 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 do. Da 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 thirds. so you're combining two really catchy ways of playing melodies combine them in clusters of 3 or use thirds which is the most pleasant or usable or the best interval you could say because thirds build everything including chords so you combine that in this rhythmic structure and what is the rhythm again tang ta dang ta da dum ta dum ta dum so maybe tan ta dum you do a set of 3 Da da, you do a third, so three, third, three, third, set of three, third interval. Them, da. So let's do that with just the rudimentary, the first three notes. Quite nice. Dun, da, 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 da. If you ask me, it sounds quite nice. This as a melody. Practice that. Now, if you observe, the sets of three are being played in an ascending manner. That means I'm going up the keyboard. Even the third is being played in a ascending manner. I'm going up the third. So why not you descend both? You 
you get another pattern or another tune that's an ascending descending it's sort of like even it could be used as a call and response compositional methodology same rhythm but one is ascending and one is descending and then i'm i'm sure your you guys are already wondering uh, what if i combine them let's do that that's ascending sets of 3 descending thirds or descending sets of 3 and ascending third so now again some of you may be wondering why do you why are you only playing e f sharp g and then e g well i'm just doing it to demonstrate but then you can go all over the scale so make a note of all your third pairs and make a note of all your sets of three groupings right all of this is uh, printed out for you it'll also be available as a download on our patreon you should definitely head over there and get yourselves a copy okay so you create this environment of merging the th third sets or three sets with thirds and uh, that's how you go you're going to improvise over the same old rhythm pattern which is right this has almost become a broken record by now if you've been following these chapters from the very beginning so you go you can just improvise so no one is telling you which set of 3 to play or which third to play in which combo with each other right similarly one could be ascending the other one could be descending so even though i've given you a very stringent uh, way of making your melody use thirds you sets of 3 that's all but then that's not all the way they actually come together is well right now saying this i would imagine a lot of possibilities to a point that you just say it's very infinite and very artistic because there's so many options out there right you could do let me just jam a bit you can stop a little bit maybe i'm doing thirds and then sets of 3 or right okay and then why does the left hand just have to drone with e the left hand is rather simple now right so have some fun with it that was an improvised melody in the right hand using sets of 3 and third pairs with the left hand keeping it fairly simple as long as you're diatonic on the scale the thirds can either be ascending descending the sets of 3 also can be ascending descending okay as long as you're on the key it should be fine it's printed out for you do check it out and practice accordingly did we use any different rhythm not really it's just been the same rhythm throughout this uh, this series tum ta dum ta dum so i have one more really creative approach to navigating through a single rhythm for one bar let's do that and i hope all these five approaches are going to give you uh, a little bit more creativity when you are staring into a, pi a, a piece of rhythm and also open your mind a bit more towards music notation learning how to read music is quite important it's a great skill to have and more than a skill to become a pro or a professional musician it's an inspiring tool music notation so it's good to read it because uh, it's our own 
programming language as musicians so it's important to know it and it it's global you can communicate with anyone through music notation let's move on Right guys so let's move on to this last chapter of our series on improvising over a single rhythmic pattern for one bar okay so what i want you to consider or what i want you to think about are what are all those finger drills which you practice as a beginner piano player i would reckon that the first ever one would be tang 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 you know is going up and down it's the same for a guitar or other instruments as well they just tell you go up and down the first five notes of the scale so in this case we've been doing minor for our entire lesson so minor third g okay so the whole purpose of this chapter would be to take a rather redundant exercise it could even be a going up and down a major scale but doing it in a rhythmic phrase or doing it with this particular rhythmic pattern which is okay so i'm just going to do so what's happening there the rhythm is ta ta da ta da it's always been that right earlier we did some bass stuff we've done a drum groove we've done chord patterns arpeggios melodic improv now it's just a rather boring finger drill which we are trying to make a bit more creative so instead of doing that which is endless eighth notes you do what's happening there you're just going up and down sa re ga ma pa pa ma ga re sa 1 2 3 4 5 in terms of fingers and scale degrees in terms of swaras sa re ga ma pa pa ma ga re sa and if you observe while doing the right hand i'm preparing my left hand for the work to come which could be the pulse or a minim or just hold it with something in the scale so if i'm on e minor you just stick with those notes get used to e change over c maybe a b c lot of notes uh, d d sharp okay now what if you do what if you do another pattern in your left hand with this pattern in the right hand now that will be quite crazy let's not bother doing that in this particular lesson but you get the idea if you wanted to try another rhythm like like queens we will rock you do do ta so if you want to do that in the bass using pinky pinky thumb root root octave and then hold your own in the right on the main rhythm we've been learning all throughout which is tang ta dang ta dang so tang ta dang ta dang is here and do do ta we will rock you is here to be a good challenge and a good finger exercise or rather it's starting to it's it's not really sounding like an exercise anymore isn't it right you what what was once very something you just do to just pass the time and improve your technique by doing something which you'll never use in an actual song with a rhythm pattern which you read very well and uh, acknowledge you know and count it really well combine it with the left hand it doesn't have to be called an exercise anymore it can be like anything it could be a step towards building up a melody or a song which you are going to compose okay guys so 
uh, in a nutshell, we've looked at five ways to look at a rhythm and be as creative as we possibly can because the rhythm does not give you pitch, it does not give you chords, it doesn't give you any real uh, y-axis or pitch information as we say. So what do you do? You have to figure out what can be done on your primary instrument, which is the piano. So we first looked at drum drums with the left hand, kick and snare. Then we looked at chord patterns using blocks, arpeggios and broken chords, right? Then we looked at building a bass line over the pentatonic or the blues scale. Then we looked at some awesome improvised melodies in the right hand, which can be built using just sets of three and pairs of thirds, ascending, descending, right? And last but not least, we took an otherwise boring finger drill and then make it more rhythmic and groovy with, with the rhythm pattern. Right? So these are five ways to really enhance your creativity, hopefully, and also work out a rhythm pattern by reading it. And if you have any other way which you are practicing, or if you'd like to share yourself playing any of this stuff, do consider maybe rec recording something on Instagram and uh, tagging either the music school or me, uh, which is Jason Zach, on Instagram and I'll be happy to go through it. Otherwise, I don't know what you people are up to. A lot of you are watching the lesson, giving some great suggestions for future lessons, but I need to also, I would love to hear you guys also uh, playing some of this music right again this is jason here from nathaniel if you haven't already do consider downloading the patreon notes for this entire lesson stuff in the uh, past also things to come uh, you could also subscribe to our channel hit the bell if you haven't already leave us a comment share the video and uh, like the video cheers